<clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is it. This is our final masterclass um, for our sales confidence membership for 2022. Um, it's been a fantastic start this year. Um, we've had some incredible contributors, uh, and I'm really excited about um, this next speaker, uh, Andrew Stevens, um, who is going to be sharing um, his expertise uh, on a number of um, operating systems and approaches to uh, developing your leadership strategy for success. Why I'm really excited about this, and I know Andrew um, will probably share more, the, 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 the kind of uh, framework philosophy that is represented through the EOS entrepreneurial operating system um, has evolved from a number of books that have been written over the last few years. And even as an individual contributor, you know, often what people talk about as a salesperson or a sales leader is how do you apply that entrepreneurial mindset? And so the books are, are highly recommended to anyone contributing and growing businesses, which, which you all are. Um, also, I think what's really valuable about Andrew, he's got a, a stellar background in the software industry, you know, over 20 years working management, individual contributor roles, VP roles at companies like um, IBM, Adobe, um, um, Modify and Ozabar and, and many others. And also, uh, just to add, he also spent five years in the um, British Arm, uh, Army as a, a trumpet player, which is really, really cool. Um, so, Andrew, uh, I'm really excited about this session. Uh, this is our final masterclass um, for 2022. Um, thanks for getting involved and uh, I will hand over the mic to you now. Great. I presume, James, you can hear me. I haven't yeah. touched any, any buttons. Good. We, well, we can hear this is um, good. Good. This is a first for me. I can't see my audience. So I hope everyone is here <laughs> and everybody is uh, you can be munching on your lunch, which is a great thing at the end of the day. And um, what I what I encourage you to do is please ask questions. I know we've got a, a compact time here. Um, hopefully you can see my email on this screen. Um, so there's anything that's arising out of this session, then feel free to reach out to James or come uh, directly to me on the email here, andrew.stevens at eosworldwide.com. Uh, I'd love to take any questions. Feel free. There's no obligations. Just let me know. Um, EOS is very much worked out on a help first community. Um, so I'd love to know any questions that uh, arise, given that we're also going to be going at pace here today on that side of things. So the first things first, um, I've got some temporary goggles. So just uh, bear with me. Um, these goggles are following some cataract operations that I had. So I keep taking them on and I keep taking them off because I can't quite focus my eyes properly. So uh, apologies if I seem like a nutty professor with them at the end of my nose. So let's get started. Um, on that basis. Um, some objectives for today. Um, first objective is to help you become great leaders and managers. So no matter how much uh, of a great leader and manager you are already or aspiring to be, the time you leave here, I'm going to notch that up one level. So that's my objective is to help you become either in the business that you're in today or where you're moving to in the future, a better leader and manager. James shared with me some other things that I'm going to be touching on about developing a clear vision, how you set and plan goals. Um, how do you, great, great punt here, how do you get traction to hit your sales goals and how do you build a healthy and productive team? So we're going to be touching on them very high level. Um, the time today doesn't, doesn't permit that we get into those weeds, but I'm going to give you some ideas and thoughts that are going to help you on that journey. And then lastly, um, as a byproduct to this, you're going to learn a bit about this thing called EOS, which is the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Um, and I don't want to turn it into a pitch, but um, hopefully you learn a little bit more about it um, and how that works on that side of things. So that's my objectives for, for the session. Um, the agenda is I'm going to share with you the model because the logic of this comes out of a model, um, a system. Um, in, in essence, we are going to I'm going to help you understand how you systemize the things that you do. And James kindly shared a bit a backstory about uh, myself, um, bag carrier, team leader, VP of sales. Um, I, I 
contribute my success over the years largely to using a system. Um, and that goes all the way back to my, my, my musical days in the British Army, is if you're a musician, you'll, you'll know that music follows a system. You know, you learn your scales, you learn your chords, and, and ultimately you're learning a method um, for you to practice and get better at what you do. And, and, and in business, it's exactly the same. There's, there's methods for business, there's methods for sales. So if you're familiar with the sales methodologies and you've got one, uh, if you haven't got one, I urge you to get one. But EOS is a fundamentally, it's a business system that you can run the organization. And that, that doesn't mean it's, it's a technical system, it's a methodology framework on that side of things. I'm gonna introduce something called LMA, and there's gonna be a lot of acronyms here and phrases, apologies I'm gonna be throwing at you. Um, LMA is, is what we use um, as leading, managing and accountability. It's how you can do those things with the people that you work for to get to drive better success on that basis. So let me dive straight in. What I want you to think about in this orange circle is your world. OK, um, and the discovery that the chap that wrote this book, uh, Traction, so Traction is, is what EOS is all about. Traction is about how you instill discipline and accountability in an organization. Um, and what he realized when he was putting EOS together is that all entrepreneurial businesses tend to face 136 simultaneous challenges. And those come at you all day, every day. Customers, uh, internal people, suppliers, all these challenges just get thrown at you all the time, every day. And, and really, as a, as, a, as a leader or an aspiring leader, the difference between these companies that make it and, and people that succeed is, is really what they're doing is they're solving their issues um, for the greater good of the organization. The companies that don't quite make it, they plateau and they don't succeed. They just don't solve their issues for the greater good. They just they solve them temporarily and they kick that can down the road and they just keep coming back. Whilst the great companies solve and they go on to get different issues, the, the businesses that don't just get stuck and really bogged down. So what, what I'm trying to say here is those 136 issues, I'm going to introduce this model of where they, they all sit. Because if you know how to solve them, then you can keep going quicker and easier and faster on that basis. So I'm just going to go high level, but bear with me on that basis. And what we call the, the EOS model essentially boils down to six key components. And that first component is all organizations or departments need to have a vision. You need to know where you're going as an organization um, and what is it that you're aiming for and what are the, the values that who you are as an organization. Once you've got that clear in your mind, you then got to get people to come with you on that journey. And this is the critical part is we're not we're not and won't be for a long time in an AI world where a whole business is run on AI. We are reliant on people and people around us. We're humans at the end of the day. And if you've ever read the book Good to Great by Jim Collins, he talks about the right people on the bus at the end of the day. You've got to get those right people. And actually the. The, the, the science and the data behind business issues, those 136 challenges, 80% of them are people related. So we've got a big job here to think about the people and the organization. Once we've got that, we're in a world of data. So instead of egos and opinions, we've got to look at the facts and figures when we make decisions in our organization. Now, if you get these three things, firing clearer, better, uh, and more open in your in your team or organization. So you've got a great vision with good people and you've got good data. What you're what you're enabling is all those issues to bubble to the surface. And once they bubble to the surface, your job as a leader is to to solve them at the end of the day or help your people, your team solve them. So we have an issues component. And that's just simply saying all of our things that slow us down or whatever ideas we have 
we've got to get them in an open environment so we can solve them. The next thing is, well, if we know what the problems are, then nine times out of 10, it's the things that we do each day, every day. We've got to systemize our business. If we're going to scale and grow, we're moving past that first phase of entrepreneurialism where a few people do everything. We've now got to think about how we systemize our business. And that's what we call process. And then the last thing is the traction. So we can spend all the time thinking about this great vision with great people and data. But if we really don't bring it down to the ground and get success and get traction, then at the end of the day, vision without traction is what we call hallucination. You've got to get or you've got to, you know, the rubber hits the road. You've got to get momentum and success at the end of the day. So this is the this is the EOS model. And I want you to think about this because any issues that you're facing in your daily lives, in your jobs, in your teams, they, they fit into one of these. Now, today doesn't give us the time to go into what we would do next, but we essentially have tools and disciplines in each of these components that help you understand how you strengthen these six key components, which means you are systemizing your business. You're working together as a team um, to drive accountability and move forward. Um, so I just wanted to plant that seed that this is some of the that the the vernacular that I'm going to be using today to talk about on that side of things. So hopefully that helps. So what we're going to be talking about now is this thing called LMA. And um, what LMA is, is if you are the leader of your organization and you have a set of responsibilities on your head or the seat that you're sat in, if you employ a team or you've got people that are dependent on you, then LMA is your number one role of your seat, um, which means you are giving people your time to help them get better and increase their results. So think about that, all the stuff that you do, if you aren't putting your people first, then you're losing out and they're losing out. So we always put LMA at the start of a seat description or your job description as the leader of the organization. And I'm going to break down what LMA means. So it's actually in a, it's an equation. So L plus M equals A, which is leadership and management equals accountability. <clears throat> Excuse me. You, you can't make somebody accountable. It's been proven in science that it is just not possible. Accountability is a byproduct of being a effective leader and manager and accountability will follow. OK, so what I'm going to introduce to you is what what what's the difference between leadership and management? Because they are very different things. Sometimes they're blurred into I am the sales leader. So that means I do everything that, that it, you don't. At the end of the day, you need to understand what leadership is and what management is. So I'm going to break them down so you can understand the differences here. So leadership means you are working on the business. It means you are you are extracting yourself from your seat, from your role to work above the business. Um, I like to use the phrase if if you are in charge of a bunch of loggers in the floor in the in the forest and all of you are working hard in, you know, you're chopping down the trees. And if there's no one that's rising up to the canopy to look at the direction that you're going, then you could be zigzagging all over the place. Working on the business needs you to elevate yourself, yourself above it so you can look down on what's happening. It's a bit like the coach analogy in sport, in football, and very topical at the moment. You know, the coach is on the sideline because they can see what's going on. You can't be part of a system and at the same time understand it. The second thing of leadership is about giving people a clear direction. That comes back to the vision I was talking about. What is it that we're doing here? Where are we going with this thing? The third thing is about creating openings. And there's a there's a famous, famous phrase called 
called Nature Abhors a Vacuum. And, and I don't know if any of you know what that means, but essentially what that means is if you are looking for nature to come to you, all you need to do is create an opening. So if you think about an opening in the forest again, you just create the opening and nature floods in. And what that really means is with your people, with your teams, you need to create those conversations and openings to receive feedback. Um, I was once told we were given two of these and one of these. We got two ears to listen. You need to create the opening so you can get feedback. And the last thing is the thinking. This is where we do the thinking as a leader in, of the organization. And we get people to think as well um, on that side of things. So this is what leadership is. Here's what management is. Management is about in the business. It's about the the doing, the stuff that we do every day. We have to set expectations about what is it that we need people to do to make that seat that they're sat in successful. What are those expectations that you want them uh, to achieve? We have to be great communicators. So we communication's got to be clear when we're taking messages from the leadership team all the way into the business and back up to the leadership team. We've got to make sure we're good at that communication. And then lastly, it's about the execution and the doing um, in the business. So we've got to make sure we're providing um, clear um, direction on the doing. So these are the differences between leadership and management. What I'm going to give you now, and I'll send this afterwards, and James, we can talk about how we get it to the team. Essentially, this is two self-assessment um, uh, ways that we are going to look at ourselves to see how effective we are, how effective I am at being a great leader. And this comes out of, again, Gina, who wrote the book. There's a, he realised there's a million books about being a great leader and a great manager. This is a simple way of improving how you are as an individual so you can become better. And I'll send these on to you afterwards. And how I want you to approach them is if you have got direct reports, then you must answer yes, as in all of your direct reports would say yes to the answer. If it's a no, it means you have got to get better at these five things. So it's, a, it's an all in assessment. If one, one of your employees or team says no, then you've got to improve what you do here to help them um, and become a, a more effective leader. So hopefully I've, I've, I've explained that again. Oh, please ask questions if I haven't. So I'm going to start with these five questions um, on that basis. And, and you, by the way, you can write these down as well if you want to and take part. But if not, you can I can follow up afterwards. So the first thing is, are you giving clear direction as a leader of your organization? And, and again, what we are trying to say here is, are you creating the openings for the conversation and the feedback for, for them to tell you that they understand where we're going with the organization? Are you creating those openings? And the easiest way to explain what an opening is, again, nature abhors a vacuum, they are sat in a seat in your organization. That seat has a, a set of responsibilities that they you hired them for. They're coming into this organization because you want them to do this job. The best thing you can do as a leader is ask them how that is. How is it going? How do we help you? What are you finding difficult? What is slowing you down? What is holding you back? And listen, because they're going to tell you a whole bunch of stuff that isn't working or if they've got ideas about doing something different, they're going to give you that feedback of, of the seat that they're sat in. The second thing is the business that you're in has got a plan. Well, I hope it has anyway. It, it will have a vision. Explain that vision to them and ask for feedback. Ask for input of, do they understand it? Is it clear? Can they see how they can contribute to it? 
ultimately you've got a plan you've got to share it with them the amount of teams i work with when i ask that question of how's the plan how have you explained it oh, we haven't done it well how can you expect that people to come with you if you haven't explained it to them so this is about you as being a leader is am i giving clear direction yes or no so just look at yourself and think maybe i need to explain more often and we always say you've got to explain things seven times to hear it for the first time so we get very frustrated very quickly when we haven't when we've said it three times and then you bang your head against the wall because people aren't listening you've got to do it seven times before they internalize it for the first time we call our plan in eos the vto which is a vision traction organizer it's eight questions that the whole company understands that's where we're going and that's what we're doing i won't go into that today so the first question is am i giving clear direction the second question is am i providing the necessary tools now if we have given clear direction and they understand what they're doing and where we're going if you don't give them the right tools it's it's debilitating it's 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 pointless because they can't execute and what we mean by tools is, are you providing the resources that they need to succeed? Are you giving them the training that they are craving? Um, are you giving them the right technology to, to, to achieve their jobs? Uh, do they need people to support them in their jobs? And lastly, are you giving them your time as a leader? Are you there for them or are you too busy doing your stuff because that's what you know how to do. So these are the things that are you providing the necessary tools? You can guess, but if you're not asking your team, you, you won't know. So again, yes or no to those questions is uh, is going to help you understand these things are uh, are required for people to be successful. The last, sorry, it's not the last. The next one is a phrase that again you may be familiar with. It's called letting go of the vine. And that is a saying that means, are you letting them succeed to, uh, to succeed? And are you letting them fail? It's so important for the both of those things to happen. And if you're not let go, letting go of the vine is that and the vine is the thing that you're hanging on to because you just don't feel comfortable that they can do the job. And if you're if you're not letting go and you're not letting them learn, then you can't expect them to get better. So you've got to let go of that vine. And there's a great book recommendation here. It's called The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. And there's a self test that you can go through with this this monkey analogy. A monkey is an issue. Now, if your team are coming to you on a daily basis, and they are dropping off these monkeys at your desk um, or in your inbox because they don't know how to do something or they can't be bothered to do something and you're catching all the monkeys, which means at the end of the day, you've got nine monkeys to deal with and they're going down the pub, then the chances are you're not letting go of the vine or you can't let go because the things aren't, the tools and resources are not right in your business um, at the end of the day. So that question is, am I letting go of the vine? Am I letting them succeed and fail so we can learn as a team? The next thing is, am I, am, am I acting with a greater good in mind? And, and this means that we're putting the company first. Sadly, that's what's important. A lot of people think people come first. But if we're part of a profit organization, the business comes first. We've got to think about the plan that we've agreed we have to put that first. My actions, my decisions, I've, you've got to walk the talk. Everything's got to be with the greater good, good of the organization in mind. And if you're putting yourself first um, and you're not walking the talk, then you're not being a great leader at the end of the day um, on that basis. So you've just got to ask yourself, am I acting with the greater good in mind? And the last question of the of the leadership side here is, apologies another phrase are you taking clarity breaks now you're probably thinking what the bloody hell is that you're talking about here so clarity breaks are designed for you to be effective as a leader and what they mean is you take time out 
in your busy schedules to think about on the business. We stop, we pause, and we think about, are we doing the right things in our organization? Are you creating clarity? Am I protecting my confidence? This is so important. If you are exhausted, if you are tired, if you are not in the right mental health position, then you are not protecting your confidence. You're exposing yourself to, to weakness. And sometimes people will take, take the mickey, will take the piss. Um, you've got to protect your confidence, which means you've got to stop and think about what's going on with the organization, with your team and with yourself. And we call them clarity breaks. Clarity breaks can be as often as you feel you need, but you must be vigorous and you must take them on a routine. So you may choose to do them daily, weekly or monthly, and they can be 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Some of my leaders will take a whole day to go and think about, are we doing the best in our organization? If I give you a bit of coaching, if you don't know what to do, find a coffee shop, take a blank piece of paper and let your mind take you where it needs to go. It doesn't have to have a structure at the end of the day. I will forward this afterwards. This is an example of what you might do in a clarity break um, to help you understand some of the questions you might ask yourself. I love this one. I don't know whether you guys um, do any meditating or any fitness, but at the end of the day, you should sit in meditation for 20 minutes a day. Unless you're too busy, then you should sit for an hour. It's a really important point. So those are five questions you can ask yourself as a leader. They may help you get one step better. OK, and it's a yes, no for all of the people that are dependent on you. So quickly moving over to the management, because we're now moving into the business. The management is, is a different thing. And, and what I want to stress here is none of these systems are designed to help make you change who you are. We are, we absolutely believe that who you are is really important. We're not trying to change your character and change how you manage. That's important that you just be who you are. These are just things you use to help you get better. So the first question in the management self-assessment is, I keep my expectations clear. This is, this is really important because we're sometimes running so fast to get a message across of an organization that we forget about the other person. So when we, when we say keep expectations clear, mine and theirs, we, we set ours from the company perspective and the team perspective, but we're gonna ask what their expectations are. And again, we're gonna listen because they might be wanting to do things that you weren't aware of. And if we're not listening, and we're not understanding their expectations, we aren't working with our team clearly. And the way that you explain your expectations as a leader is you are explaining the role of their seat and how that is going to be measured. That's it. It's as simple as that for you to understand and for them to feed back about expectations. The second is, am I communicating well as a, as a manager? Me and them. You must always know what's on the other person's mind. OK, and when you see those eyes rolling. You must stop. You must ask the question, hey, I, I noticed you roll those eyes or, or I, I noticed your funny face what's what's up what's what's the problem here what have we what's not working or what have we what why are you doing that um don't make any assumptions just you've got to enter the danger to make sure you are communicating as a manager on what's on their mind and if you don't then things are only going to go wrong at the end of the day sometimes we get a bit of tension between each other and we call we need to solve that um, and we call that the two emotions and two emotions are based around when those tensions aren't aren't working well. We're just going to take some time. You're going to write two things down of my strengths and my weakness. And I'm going to write down two strengths 
and two weaknesses of you. And we're just going to exchange them. What this does is helps break that tension. And we're just going to hear each other. So we are on that same page. There's no egos. There's no opinions. It's just let's understand each other's emotions when you find tension. A good thing as a manager is what we call the question to statement ratio. Now, I am doing an example here of too much statements because I'm doing all the talking. OK, when we are being a manager in the business, if all we are doing is the talking, then our, our ratios are wrong. OK, we should be giving a clear, concise message and we should be listening. OK, so if we're on that 80, 20, 80, we're doing 80 percent of the talking and they're doing 20 percent. You've got to adjust that to be an effective manager. We've got to get that that ratio more balanced at the end of the day. The third question that we are as a manager, because we've got people in our organization doing their job. Do you have the right meeting pulse? We aren't sitting in meetings all the time. We have to have an even exchange of dialogue. You know, we can't always be in meetings because we've got to let them do their jobs at the end of the day. Are we reporting on what's the important thing so we can understand when things are going wrong? And are we keeping the circles connected? And the circles are connected are when we are these two examples here. If you can see the top one, that is the micromanager. That is somebody that's smothering somebody and not giving them the opportunity to thrive and succeed. We need to find that balance of how often do we need to meet and when we meet, what is it all about? So ultimately, we need to make sure we also don't end up with this other example on the left. This means we're not connected. And this is where shit goes down the gap and things go wrong. So you've got to figure out that best meeting pulse with your team and your, your contributors to, to make sure that you are talking at the same language. Oh, hold on. My, bear with me a sec. You can probably hear my radio too. It's sad, isn't it? Bit of afternoon listening. That's all good. Are we back on the screen? Yep, you're back. Good. So coming up to the last um, last couple of points here. So as a manager, you need to have quarterly conversations, not annual reviews, the, the uh, appraisals. You need to keep connected to your team and your contributors. And we say this is at a good pulse quarterly and there's a couple of rules when we do the quarterlies we are doing it out of the work environment take them obviously geography aside if you can connect well maybe geography not aside you should get together as people as humans to to, to understand each other out of the office and those quarterly conversations are just about letting them talk you know, how have they found things? How are they how are they measuring their success? How can we help you? How can we contribute to your uh, your role and you becoming better and more successful in the organizations? They're not these appraisals that go through all of these, you know, form filling out to try and figure out your 360 degree reviews. They're simple one to ones that you're going to have with your direct reports. Now, this is a really important phrase. Um, no amount of money will induce somebody to lay down their life, but they will gladly do so for a bit of yellow, yellow ribbon. Uh, at the end of the day, the last point is about are you rewarding and recognizing um, your contributors? Because you need to. Um, it's important. And it's not about <laughs> for the sales <laughs> all salespeople. It's not about the money. At the end of the day, people are not always money motivated. So it's important that you recognize people in real time, not from last week. It's when you see something, you're going to give positive and negative feedback within 24 hours. Pick up the phone, talk to them and say, that's great. Or hold on a minute. Something's not right here. I need to address that because if you leave it, especially on the negative, if you leave it past those 24 hours, you're missing an opportunity to change behavior 
and you're also effectively digging yourself in a hole. A rule here is always criticize in private, praise in public. So if one of the team is not doing what they should be doing, you've got to take that away from the team. Don't do it in the team. And you've got to have that conversation again within 24 hours. You don't you don't have to sort it within 24 hours. You've just got to flag it. You've got to say, hey, I've, I've seen something that didn't follow the process or the behavior wasn't right or whatever it is. You, you, you and I need to talk. I can't get it done today, but I'm just letting you know that that's not acceptable behavior. Um, something that I see way too much of is people think to be a great manager, you, you've got to become a, a friend. It is. It never succeeds. I don't think I've ever, ever seen it work. You've got if you're the if you're the manager and the leader, you've got to be the boss at the end of the day. Please don't build your career on being a buddy because it will catch you out. Uh, at some point, there is a tough conversation that will come. And if it's there, if you're a friend, it, it won't work out. It won't end nicely. Now, that's not to say that you can't be. You can't be a, a, a human manager and you can't get on outside of work, but don't go on being the buddy at the end of the day. So bringing it back to what this is all about, to be an effective leader and a great manager, you've got to do these different. You've got to think differently and you've got to think about how you do that. Now, those those two self-assessments appreciate I've gone through at lightning pace here, essentially are just for you to become more effective. And there's certain things that you can pull out of there, hopefully to realize that that you can you can spend time working on yourself to ultimately get more out of your people on that side of things. So it's an equation, leadership plus management equals accountability. I don't I was told I had about 40 minutes um james i'm happy to take any questions because that was super fast the content from my perspective um is is done love any feedback i'd love to know if there's any takeaways um i understand that you you regroup a week later um if anybody wants to follow up and ask any questions you are more than welcome um to do that um but sure. i hope it was worth your time cheers andrew um feel free um to ping any questions uh, in the comments please I, I was just curious for um you know a bunch of the the members on the the call um <clears throat> you know, they're not directly having necessarily got direct reports but they're influencing people around them all the time as you know right trying to um manage uh, large sales cycles. There's there's multiple key stakeholders involved um, in those deals, and I was just wondering, like your perspective, you know, thinking about um, kind of leading and influencing when you when someone doesn't directly report into you. Yeah, the interesting. Most leadership team or most leaders don't know the, the direct report comes from managing okay so that's when you you've got a team of people that work in your team the leadership normally means you're talking to people that don't report to you so all of those things that i shared in in leading apply um you know are you providing the right are you asking the right questions are you providing the right direction so if you're leading a deal it, is that deal set up right? Have I got all the facts? Have I got all the information? Because if you've got people in your deal team um, or you're, you're, you're leading it, then they need to know what, how, what roles they play, what's your expectations. And ultimately, it, it's a leadership team goes across a business. So they're interfacing with multiple people at multiple times. Um, again, if if you're if you're in if you're running the deal, then you've got to work out on the deal, not in the deal. So you've got to think that it applies exactly the same um, for for specifically for sales. And I found that when I was 
when I was running deals, it, it's, you know, take a step out. Um, I, I, you know, the clarity break is a, is a classic example. You know, take yourself out of your business and think about all the things around this deal. Um, not just the contract, not just the costings, not just the, um, you know, the, the, the moving parts. Just think about everything. Um, and unless you take that time out, you're not going to find the blind spots. You're not going to find the problems. Um, I, what I used to find really helpful in, in my deal reviews is I'd grab, I'd grab a third party, somebody that wasn't involved in the deal. And I say, look, can I just get 30 minutes of your time for me to explain this deal? Because I want you to think about how I see it. You might see it differently. Um, and sometimes it was, you know, finance, finance person. Well, I need you, you know, at the end of the day, we're a company. We're all chasing the deal. If I explain this deal to you, can you help me understand? I mean, am I missing things? Um, and that's what that's what leadership's all about. If I if I give you a direction, what do you think about it? So yeah, a deal is exactly the same. That's that's um, you know a super helpful perspective on you know how to leverage others' point of view um, and feedback on what you're working with directly. So that's that useful. I think the other thing is also um, you know naturally everyone's selling to different levels in an organization and understanding how they operate and what their priorities are um, is really important. And I think, you know, this framework gives you an indication of what matters at management level versus what man what matters at kind of, um, you know, the leadership executive level from a comparisons perspective as well. Yeah. The, if you, if you think about leading and managing in a deal cycle, managing is, is the moving parts of the product or service that you're providing. If you're, if you're leading, my, my, I'm trying to build the parallel. If you're leading something into wherever you're selling it, have you understood the people that are buying and procuring, have you understood their expectations? Have you understood their their gains and their emotions behind? And I, looking back again, I think it was probably the biggest driver when I went from selling shit to building, you know, getting to know people. I realised it wasn't really about selling the shit. It was about connecting with the human that's buying this stuff and understanding the personal emotions. And that, that's what leadership's all about. I'm I'm it's you know I'm understanding. What you, what, why you're here, why you're doing things. What's your personal reason for buying this product? I know, you know, then there's a business reason of they're solving a problem, problem or a pain. But what's the person? So being, thinking about being lead, you're leading your deal correctly. You're managing it, right? Meaning it's going through all the right steps and all that kind of stuff. But if you're leading it, you're truly getting into open territory, open questions, what's in it for you? Why do you want this? What's it going to do for your career? How's it going to help you as an individual? Then you're acting like a leader for your deals whilst you're, you know, if you're managing it, you're talking through all the unique selling points and what the product does and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if that's what you were, you were yeah, meaning. That's, that's super helpful. Uh, and just one final question. Um, you know, all of this system, it, you know, it's been inspired through a series of different books. Um, you know, if you had to recommend one of the books to start with, um, you know, especially for also, you know, sales professionals that are obviously um, impacting how they're, they're growing their business, you know, what, what would be the most interesting book to pick up? <laughs> My... I can't be I can't be biased and talk about an attraction because I've already talked to it. But I think the going back to what we were just talking about, the most influential book I've seen is the Simon Sinek Why. Okay, if if I can recommend reading, if you can't explain your why in your product or service and it's a set of feature functions stuff, then that's a book to read. Um, it's going to help you understand why people buy. Um, you know, buying a product in the, from a, an enterprise is no different from buying a, 
a car or an iPhone or whatever it is. There's a reason, there's an emotion behind it. Um, and I think that would help almost all salespeople at the end of the day. Great. I highly agree with that. That's a great suggestion and great recommendation. Um, so if it, it'd be great if you can share with us the um, uh, templates, Andrew, and I'll upload those into Circle um, afterwards. Uh, and also, um, you know, hopefully next year when we're pulling together um, some of our dinners, we can get you along as well to thank you and enjoy um, some more insightful conversation. But thank you very much for today's session. No worries. Great, awesome. to, great to be here. See you. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.